Buonasera a tutti, e grazie di essere qua. Good evening everyone, thank you for being here. We apologize if you see some empty seats in the back. The law doesn't allow us to have a greater number of people than we are. This number we reached immediately, so please don't tell Jack or Body off. Someone may say, hey, there's still seats available back there, my friend could have joined. No, it's against the law, we want to respect laws. Plus, these meetings are offered online too, so you can watch them in a rerun. So, the series of meetings. Each meeting will be divided into different parts. Each part stands a bit alone, but it will be connected not only to the other parts belonging to the same meeting, but also to the following ones. Let's say that the first part of this meeting is a bit broader, meaning it is meant for a lot of people. Afterwards, we'll slowly start to enter slightly more refined things, which may need more interiorization, more calmness. You can rewatch these parts online anyways, and this is also good. We'd like to offer you a meditation to, in each group, in each meeting, to practice together. Also tonight, we'll offer you one. Let's begin with the slide. As you know, we don't use slides to keep the thread. We use them to help intuitions, inner clicks, which are much more important than teaching you things. In fact, you already know too many things. As I often say, as my karma brought me to speak to several groups all over Italy, I always found that the very spiritual people have the greatest difficulties in sensing the spirit. This is an incredible thing, as we have our head full of techniques, methods, beliefs, and stuff which we believe will take us to the new consciousness, whereas they belong to the old one. And the old one is not bad, it's just something destined to slide away with love. When you see the skeleton of a dinosaur in a museum, you don't think it's something that should be destroyed, right? It is beautiful to observe it, but it is something extinct. You haven't killed it, unless in past lives I hope not. Perhaps you might have been the one killing that dinosaur in another life, who knows? We are not against the old consciousness, the old consciousness means to continue to suffer. Anyways, we are not against the old consciousness. Simply, old consciousness means to keep on suffering. And we live in an era, uh, I don't know, uh, can you hear back? Uh, perhaps it's better to be higher for those sitting at the back. Okay, fine, uh, well, I'm sorry, I don't really like the stage. Perhaps later on I'll step on the stage and <laughs> maybe I even do a strip tease. <laughs> Joking, that would be a nightmare for many. We wonder, is it possible that in this era, with more difficulties, wars, energetic crises to watch which we're going also in the upcoming winter, it is easier to have inner clicks compared to easier areas? If we're not some clothes on a chair, I'd like to ask ourselves this question. Is it possible that during easier areas, when it was easier to find a job, when it was easier to have a steady income all life long, when there was, um, how's that called, I'm not an economist, a stronger economic growth, is it possible that during these easier eras it was actually more difficult to have in a clicks? And I don't claim it is this way, I just want to ask, is it possible that we live in an era where we have a tremendous gift, even though they won't say it on the daily news, even if you won't read it in tomorrow's newspapers? An era that helps in a clicks. Why do I ask myself this question? Imagine putting a radio under the carpet. Imagine forgetting about that radio being there. One of the easy ways to remember about that radio under the carpet is the radio becoming louder. If the volume is low, you'll forget about the radio. If you hide it deep in your unconscious mind, you'll pretend everything's fine. I'm fine, everything's fine. I constantly listen to people saying this, yet very few of them have a luminous aura, according to which you can truly say that everything's fine. It's as 
if we lost contact with a very deep part of us. And this period we are going through helps reconnecting with it, with the radio hidden under the carpet, because the volume of fear, of anxiety, of need of controlling, or of fear of insecurities, say as you like it, this volume has increased. Thus, it is easier in this era that I notice having hidden something under the carpet of my unconsciousness, and it is easier that I start seeing something in this era, rather than in eras where seeing was more difficult. Are you with me? I ask you two things, because I have a tremendous ego and the following discourages me. Please, do not eat, do not chat among yourselves, and if you don't like all this, stand up and walk away silently. You have to know that years ago I got discouraged from offering meetings here, because people started to come with beers, others with puss chair and crying children. And if you go to the theatre to listen to a concert or to a reading of a divine comedy, you wouldn't be let in in that way. E quindi mi scoraggiai un po' di fare questi incontri. Quindi in una parola, se volete aiutarmi a non scoraggiarmi, siate attenti. So, I got discouraged from offering these meetings. So, in a few words, if you want to help me not get discouraged, be attentive, be present, and remember to have a respectful attitude towards others, an attitude of attention. And I say this with love. Jack, please move on to the next slide. I, I don't remember which one it is, uh, because it helps people. The first ones. Well, this is the beauty of live broadcasting. So, we are living in a period, no matter if we feel good or not, perhaps we still haven't discovered the radio under the carpet. We are living in a period filled with collective, shared fear. This fear, without a villain manipulating us, without someone acting as an enemy, this very fear manipulates us in a very powerful way until the moment we become aware of its presence. The first part of this meeting will help us approach an esoteric aspect with the simplest language possible and also approach the effects of collective, shared thoughts influencing more than we are aware of. It'll sound absurd, but Normally, the people most influenced by collective thought, by collective fear, by global anxiety, these people are almost always those thinking they don't have fears and those thinking they're not anxious. Meaning, they hid anxiety and fear so deep inside themselves that they're not aware of their presence. In reality, it is not true they're not afraid. But, as we explained in other meetings, it is true that they lost contact with themselves to the extent that they are not aware of being full of fears. If I am not aware of being full of fears, that's exactly the moment when fear manipulates me the most. It will sound paradoxical, as we tell in the groups all over Italy, People who are manipulated most by fear are people who apparently are very calm. They're not calm. They are not experiencing the peace only through meditation brings to enlightenment, contact with God. They are just disconnected from themselves and they are not aware of being full of fears and anxieties. And remember this, that which manipulates you the most is that which you are not aware of. Introduzione sul pensiero collettivo e sui suoi effetti, non per renderlo positivo, ma per distaccarci. Introduction on collective thought and its effects, not to make it positive, but to detach from it. C'è qualcuno dei nostri che può cercare di fare qualcosa sull'audio? Grazie mille. Allora, so what does this mean? We do not believe in negative and positive thought. We only believe in that peace that comes when we detach from thoughts, no matter if positive or negative according to you. What we do in this first part is not trying to turn your thoughts into positive ones, obviously which means to remain in the mind, to be slaves of the mind. We rather try to make you some dynamics, no matter who experiences them and who doesn't, we all have them, but very few have the carriage to illuminate them. As we see and recognize the fear within us, we are going much more beyond fear itself. 
On the other hand, when we think and say we have no fear, almost always we are very enslaved to that fear. Unless we have an aura full of gold, blue and violet, which is quite rare, I say it with no intent of offence. I try not to go off the cuff and follow the slides, because they are helpful. Look at this beautiful drawing. These people with bowed heads are unconsciously thinking that they are in need of help, but they are not aware. This will take us to a gospel passage, in my opinion, very much misunderstood by the so-called New Age's gurus, that is, ask and you shall receive. We've used it to ask for a Ferrari for a large-breasted wife. You can ask whatever you want and the universe will provide in abundance, just because Jesus said so. Vedremo che non è così e basterà leggere le righe precedenti del Vangelo. Quando invece chiedete vi sarà dato. We will see that it's not like that, and you will only need to read a few lines beforehand in the Gospel to realize so. When Jesus said, ask and you shall receive, he said so for those who are the service of the Father and not at the service of their own ego. So this is not about asking what the ego wants, but it is about asking for the vitals to serve, to serve the Father. And I constantly find this huge misunderstanding when I go around. They still believe in the law of attraction. They want this and that, in where there's a will, there's a way, and so on. We can mostly find this widespread belief, paradoxically, in the people that are suffering the most. If they just would allow in them the presence, the quietness, they will find that kind of peace that all these techniques are not able to provide. At this time, millions of people have thoughts full of fear, anxiety and the need of feeling safe and in control. This is the thing you need to imagine. You need to perceive it as a thing that crawls inside us and it surrounds us. All esoteric traditions are talking about the power of thought, the fact that the thought is something and today, in the first part of the meeting, we are using an almost trivial terminology in order to give you practical intuitions and not to make you believe things that, at the end, are only mental content. Taking distance from the thought that is presence allows us to take distance as well from this collective manipulation. And I want to remind you that this is not happening because we are the good ones and there is somewhere a villain that is creating all this against us, who is our enemy, and so on. It is happening because... Ora vado un po' velocemente, ci accorgeremo, si sente? Io non amo molto il microfono, però sto al gioco, ma meglio così. Canto New York, New York. Si sente troppo il fiato. Non c'è più sicuro. Non c'è un po' di anni. Ti ha detto che è Si sente meglio così? Si sente? Così si sente. Ok. Abbiamo un'altra di queste serie. E questa poi ci ritorneremo. Even if you are following these videos online, pay close attention to the slides. Because most of you, when you are here in presence, are a bit carried away by the group's energy and it's beautiful. When you're listening to these videos, while you're walking, driving, please take your time to read these images because we are making them in order to allow something to go a bit deeper than the mind, to help you with the inner clicks, the images that the eye perceives, help intuition. Therefore, we could become carriers of peace and presence, humbly and at the service. Who? Not the ones who are fearless, but the ones that have seen the sphere and its effect on ourselves. In the moment that I can see the sphere because I am not that fear, and the space between myself and the fear that today is so spread on this marvelous planet, it is that space that makes you an initiate, and it will put you in the service, even if you're not doing anything outwardly, because it is your simple presence in the service of the awakening, because you are emanating something that the world needs. You won't need to go around acting like an alchemist, dressing up like a Taoist, or doing something special, although it is not a bad thing if life asks you to do so. 
However, you can recognize that ego makes you behave in this way. It is your ego that is suggesting to you, do it in this way, so you'll satisfy the master. On the other hand, a real initiate sometimes is doing so much simply for what he emanates and not for what he is doing outwardly. Being at service can happen only to those who have become aware of all this, at least a minimum part of it. Not to those following PG, not to those who love me, whom I sincerely thank, not to those who know lots of things. You need to become aware of these things. With calmness and loving kindness. Let's get into this first part, where we've transformed almost centuries or thousand years old teachings into simpler things. With almost a trivial language, many of you will know them in more complicated words. We'll resume these teachings in the next meetings. Look at the first. It's the magnet, isn't it? Let's take thoughts as two separate things, a magnet and a tuning fork. The tuning fork vibrates at a certain frequency. If someone knows how to tune an instrument, that person will know the tuning fork too, right? If you put together the image of a tuning fork and the one of a magnet, you'll easily sense how thoughts attract what resonates with them. A magnetic tuning fork. Whereas a magnet attracts all the other magnets, all various bodies, if you are a bit technically skilled and you know a bit of physics and electronics, we could say that it's a pass-band tuning fork. That is, a magnet attracting only that which vibrates with a specific tuning fork. Try to picture this as the simplest image possible. They have the ability to both vibrate with what pertains to specific frequency and to attract what vibrates on the same specific frequency. We didn't put this on the slide. Yet, they also have another ability to reject their opposite. Meaning, there's no magnet attracting something but not rejecting something else. The mind's ability, which is not as is both to reject something without us being aware of it and to attract something else. Many so-called masters, although for me being a master is something entirely different, constantly teach you what you should be attracting and they are not showing how the more you empower the attracting force, the more you empower the rejecting force. In the same way, in a magnet you cannot empower just one pole. You know, I'm a physicist, I love theoretical physics, yet we'll enter in some sort of trivial physics, classic, Newton's, or better said, Maxwell's physics in this case, and little by little we'll try to sense things also from a scientific perspective. When many thoughts are similar, similar frequencies, they attract themselves, being many, their ability to attract will be stronger, like a bigger magnet. Let's take an example. Imagine each one of you having two or three magnets in your pocket. You know, a magnet influences the surrounding magnetic field. If you go closer to a magnet with a compass in your hand, the compass won't indicate north, also called magnetic north. It's not exactly the geographical north, but it coincides with our latitudes. So, if you put a magnet close to a magnetic needle, strong enough and near enough, that magnetic needle tends to be diverted not only by the terrestrial magnetic field, but also by the one of the magnet. Are you with me? Now imagine each of us having in their pockets two, three or four small magnets. Now imagine that I ask you to put them all on the stage. Each of us stands up and puts the magnets on the stage. What would there be on the stage? There would be a big, enormous magnet a gargantuan magnet. What is its peculiarity compared to the small magnet you had in your pocket? It has the same quality of the magnet you had in your pocket, yet more intense. Are you with me? So, if we put all the magnets on the stage, they stop being small magnets and become a giant magnet. This means that a bigger magnet 
has the ability to divert a magnetic needle from a further distance than a smaller magnet. Are you following? Now, if these magnets are also a tuning fork and they resonate with a frequency of fear, anxiety, with the need for security, what will happen? But if these thoughts come all together, esotericism calls them egregor, the word is not important, because I often find people who know all the words when they actually have a sausage aura. It is more important that you embrace it. Therefore, when this magnet is strengthened, because many people have a similar thought, this magnet becomes more powerful. Try to follow. If you put two similar magnets in the opposite pole that attract each other, two magnets, while one attracts one another, will attract the other. But when one is huge and one is small, the bigger will stay where it is, firm in its ideas, and all of those little ones will be attracted towards the big one. This means that the more people unknowingly have thoughts of fear, of anxiety, of need for control in this period, the more those same people nourish the manipulating energy. This means that there is no bad guy who is manipulating you, but that, in a way, we are the bad guys. Because I keep finding people that say, we are ready to kill the bad guy. We are ready to kill the bad guy. Who is he? In reality, we ourselves are feeding this energy. And the more we are unaware of what is under the carpet, the more we give our energy to the same manipulation. So while you think someone is manipulating you, if you don't have an inner click and inner presence, you are the manipulators. While you think that you want to be calm, in peace, that you have nothing to do with the collective fear, you are feeding it. And one of the signs that you are feeding it is that you always feel quite tired, empty, weak, because part of your energy goes to nourish this collective magnetism. You can use more esoteric terms, it doesn't matter. It just empowers itself. While you say that you meditate for peace, fight for peace, all you do is pray. So, if you don't bring awareness into all of this, you yourself feed this great manipulation. While you think there is someone manipulating you, yes or no, you are yourself the manipulator. Am I offending you? Obviously, the purpose is to simply see these dynamics calmly and on your own. You have to see them for yourself, because even if there is someone here who has seen them in himself, he cannot give you his seeing, you have to see them on your own. In fact, if someone begins to see these dynamics, it is as if that magnetic field no longer affects them, because now he resonates with other things. And therefore, even if he was in the midst of a great collective fear, that fear would no longer touch him. Who are these? They are the servants. They don't go around like teachers, they don't even give you a spiritual certificate. Often they don't even need to initiate you to a long spiritual journey. They simply have a different emanation from the collective one that vibrates in the world today, which is fundamentally full of anxiety and fear. And I repeat it, it is almost always reinforced by people who feel spiritual and are against all this. And they think they are in service of peace, but they are not. Does the world need new servants? To be a servant, you don't need to desire to be one. You must have made some inner clicks. Otherwise, while you want to fix clean shirts with greasy hands, you will do nothing but damage. This is what I find in many spiritual groups. People who have understood a lot about spirituality, but they haven't made any inner click and having a very low aura, they do nothing but bring that emanation into the world. While they talk about peace, they visualize creating their reality and so on, they just scatter this garbage around the world. The moment you see it, you are not angry with those people, 
but you simply detach from them, just as if the music in you changes. Please, calmly, get up and stand close to a person, possibly someone you don't know. If you are alone, raise your hand and look around. Help us look around. Arms along the body. Close your eyes. Just notice the silence, the hum of the microphone, the speaker, the spinning fan. And let this moment be as it is. Without wanting it to be different, stay with this moment as it is. I would not want this moment different from how it comes. Eyes open. I die. If you want to laugh, just laugh, but don't talk. This is a practice we do in all groups and it is much more powerful than it appears to you. And, in your own way, tell the person in front of you that you love him or her the way he or she is. That he or she is wonderful as he or she is. la slide successiva. Abbiamo il video del diafragma. Allora, let's see this video which is almost trivial. You probably know it already. Per spegnere e accendere le luci c'è qualcuno? Qualcuno spenga le luci per favore.
un po' più alto. Là. Cosa ci fa vedere questo video? Non c'è l'audio. Che cosa? Che cosa? Oh, ragazzi. Forza. Si sente? Ma avete fatto due prove? Si sente? What does this video show us? If you hit a tuning fork, then stop it. Then set a microphone and another tuning fork beside this latter vibrates with that same frequency. Now let's take this to another level. Excuse the triviality of the exposition. Some people are full of fears or anxieties, and the ones who smile to show that it's all right are the worst. I remind you about this, because when you see an angry person, you know that he's angry, that he has anger, fear or anxiety. Facebook and the social media, nothing against them, want us to wear a nice mask and smile. We don't realize that the worst tuning forks are the ones you don't immediately recognize by the angry, dull face or the ones, pardon my French, who are pissed off with life, being full of fears. When such a tuning fork is close to me, if there is no consciousness in me, fears or anxieties that are not mine become mine. Maybe I have an easy family, a stable salary, a regular income, a lot of money in my bank account, so I don't have any worry on my own. But yet someone else's fears or anxieties become mine. Then I start worrying without any obvious reason. In other words, I connect myself to a fear without any evident reason. Ma se non c'è consapevolezza in me che è il distacco tra me e i pensieri, ecco che quindi più del coronavirus If there is no awareness in me, that is, if there is no detachment between me and my thoughts, then the sphere affects me more than a coronavirus, a disease or a flu, more than any other disease. Well, this is the beauty of live broadcasting. I find fears that not only have no reason to be there, but that I am also not aware of. What does it mean that is there but I don't realize it? That fear wears my energy out and I turn out to be off because my energy is feeding the big magnet. Therefore, these thought forms drain my energy. I empower this fear while thinking I'm free from fears. Are you with me? Dear friends, this probably happens to many people here precisely to those who believe they are not afraid, because, I repeat, they are so disconnected from themselves that they call calmness that superficiality. But in reality, they are only disconnected from the deepest parts of the real being. So while they feel calm, not only they are not, but they are also feeding the global anxiety. And so, for an initiate, it is not very important what a person says to others. On the contrary, talking is often worse. People who talk about peace, calmness, prayer, meditation, carry more anxiety than others if they haven't had any inner clicks. But a real prayer exists, a real meditation, the awareness, which is what makes you servants instead. In a world where there is a fear shared by most of the people who don't know they are sucked into fear, these people are no longer sucked into this frequency, like a tuning fork that does not vibrate without vibration, without frequency anymore. You see a normal person who may not even be smiling, but if you saw the auras or if you perceived what he is emanating, you would immediately perceive something much more brilliant and luminous than what appears in a face that no longer cares about looking smiling and positive 
as that is yet another trap. Why do we talk about it? Because, in my humble opinion, many are ready for this leap. Moving from a fake spirituality where one is so cute, so positive, so smiling, so winning, to a deeper spirituality in which one silently sheds a light that the world deeply needs. Without worrying about appearing like masters or initiates or luminous in the eyes of others, I will always remember Father Ballester using these words Camouflage yourself. And I didn't understand. This is a very powerful thing. And he made me understand that the more a person tries to appear luminous to others, the less light he sheds on others. If you could see many great true mystics, I will mention Ramana Maharshi, whom we love very much, he would not even look very luminous. Have you ever seen the videos of Ramana Maharshi? Also, many people imagine San Francis full of light. It is true. But if you saw him live, he would probably seem nothing special. Because true masters no longer appear masters, they just are. And what they give to the world is an awareness that the world does not have yet. And it is not the impression of being positive, nice, so-called spiritual. Are you following? Are you with me? Take a look at this. More than the coronavirus, fear sticks to millions of people who do not know they are sick. Do you think it is easier to cure a person who knows he is sick or a person who doesn't? I don't know, you tell me. If I know I have a broken arm, I will probably go to the orthopedist, to the hospital. But if I think that my arm is in good health, that arm will probably get worse. Maybe that bone will heal badly and most of all, while I think I am healthy, I will start to have a lot of pain that I will call normality. And I will not be able to use that arm anymore, perhaps to help someone. So, and I know it is a paradox, in the new consciousness we are entering, people who have more inner cliques are those who shed light on their fears, not those who struggle to defeat them or say they no longer have them. And back to the first question, I wonder, is it possible that in this era where life is more difficult, it is easier to see these dynamics? Is it possible that this more difficult era comes for this purpose too? Is it possible that this is not a question of seeing a villain who must be blamed for everything, but it is a question of seeing our responsibility in unconsciously feeding this big magnet, this egregore of fear and anxiety, from which we begin to detach not really when we want it or when we understand what PG or the esoterism are saying, but when we have an inner click and not before? Now we have another video. Look at it carefully. We apologize for the technical problems, but please accept it as the beauty of a live broadcast. So, the images are enough, even if you don't read it. In high school, sometimes, you do experiments. 
I personally had high school teachers who were in love with science and still in love for science more than sterile scientific notions. That makes you develop a real passion and that led me to enroll in physics. Good teachers, I will always be grateful to and who I believe will become more and more in the new consciousness. Maybe some of them are here too. A good teacher does not fill the student's head with a lot of information, but makes the student curious and makes the student fall in love with a search for curiosity, the search for why are things like this. Great men are always very curious. They are not those who always have 10 out of 10, the highest grades. They are those who are more curious and have more intuitiveness. If you did these experiments in high school, you will remember there is the one on how to strengthen the magnet. Have you ever played with a magnet as a child? You know that Einstein, as a child, was fascinated by a magnet that his uncle, who was an engineer, gave him. He said that gift changed his life. I don't know if that is true. Probably even without that gift, life would have brought him. I think, but I cannot say. I can surely vaguely imagine the charm of something that is not visible to a very intelligent person. A remote effect. How is a magnet strengthened? By increasing the electric current, in this case, in an electromagnet, the more the electric current increases, the more the magnet attracts. The less electric current, the less prana individuals put into this big cosmic magnet, the less this big magnet will have the power to influence us. It is not about killing someone or replacing someone somewhere, I don't mention names for goodness sake, Instead, it is a question of decreasing these manipulative currents by simply not giving them our energy anymore. And it has to start with us, don't with others to do it. And even if someone here has already started, instead of saying, hey beauty, you have already started, you're a pipsqueak, silently, instead of saying that he or she has already started, he will silently encourage others to start without playing the guru and without showing that he's supposedly her head. That's just ego. Now, you know that, you also see it in middle school, so I don't go too far. A magnet splits into north and south. They are called north and south poles because in ancient times the sailors had an urgent need. The magnet, among other things, it is said that the Chinese used it since the time when we, the Western countries, did not have it yet, helped them to navigate the open sea when even the weather was cloudy and they could not see the stars to orient themselves with the so-called fixed stars. They are not fixed, but they move very slowly over a huge period of time, so when at night, during the day they looked at the sun, they couldn't see the fixed stars because it was cloudy, they couldn't navigate, they had a hard time keeping a course. Obviously there was no autopilot, there was no GPS. Here then, the compass was born as a companion for ships and goods. The evolution of our consciousness on this planet is also due to the magnet. That is, to the compass that allowed cultural exchanges, commercial exchanges, that were also cultural between populations many years ago. So this definition has remained as a tradition. The magnet is divided into north and south magnetic poles. We could call the two poles in another way. We could call them Paul and Francesca, or X and Y. But normally the two poles are called north and south because the first global application of the compass was for geographic orientation and navigation, but also on a land journey or similar. Is it clear to everyone? It doesn't mean that if I put a magnet on the table, it necessarily points north, right? I say this because when I used to give private lessons to some students, they thought that when you place magnets on the table, it automatically points north. This does not happen because of the friction. However, the two poles are called north and south. I don't know if you understand what we are talking about. Now one question arises. Can I boost just one of the poles of a magnet without boosting the other as well? No, exactly. Watch this video. On the right side is the global fear in an unconscious world. 
Most of those needles represent the people who claim they are not afraid. It is crazy, isn't it? But that's exactly how it is. There is an evolution of consciousness as we go to the left. The left is also the side of the heart. We simply no longer nourish the global fear and anxiety. Someone who lives in a world where there are no ether extremes, as theosophy calls them, of fear and anxiety, such a person feels good in the world, even if his consciousness is not very high, because awakened people is the good even for the less awakened ones. This is the real service. Thus, the big magnet starts to lose its power to make us live in fear, anxiety, in all those things that for millennia Dear friends, not only since the beginning of the pandemic or the war between Russia and the Ukraine have been manipulating women and men on this planet for ages. So, as people begin to even vaguely touch the real being that they are, when they even vaguely reach a certain degree of presence, which is not necessarily the presence of the Buddha, at that moment their energy gradually stops nurturing the collective manipulation, the collective hallucination, which is sustained by the general unconsciousness, not by a bad guy sitting somewhere. We are the good ones while he is the bad guy. Now, look at this other aspect again. Look at this other aspect again. Sorry if it looks like those topics are not interrelated. Later we will connect everything by reading the light on the path. Here is a ferromagnetic cylinder. It is a magnet that has a north and a south pole. OK, here we are talking about atomic currents. For now, try to understand only the essence of it. You see that all these impairing currents, all these atomic currents, behave as if they were a single current flowing on the outer surface of the cylinder made of ferromagnetic material. This atomic current explains why, if I try to break this magnet, I cannot separate the North Pole from the South Pole. That is, I cannot obtain a single pole magnet. In fact, it would be like breaking a solenoid, because the cylindrical magnet due to the current flowing on its surface is practically as if it were a solenoid. If I break one solenoid, I get two, where the electric current runs in both solenoids in the same direction. So, I get two shorter solenoids, each of them having both the north and the south pole. This is why, even by breaking a magnet indefinitely, single pole magnets are never to be obtained because each time it's like splitting a solenoid in half. You get many solenoids and in each of them the current runs in the same direction. Therefore, each of them have both the North and the South Pole. I don't know if you have understood what the video is about. If you take a big magnet that has a North and a South Pole and you break it because you want to keep only the South and North Poles in your pocket, that magnet immediately splits into the South and North Poles. Why do we talk about it now? Do we want to fill your heads with theories about magnetism? No, we talk about this because many people today are still convinced that we are divided between good and evil. During the pandemic, some people thought that the vaccinated or the unvaccinated were bad. I don't care which one of the two, don't get me wrong. Someone thought that his group is the one of the righteous whatever group it was. And thus, many people who call themselves masters have pushed you to fight this battle. These people were not acquainted with the law of the magnet. The moment I claim that we are the righteous, that very moment I am reinforcing the other pole too. So, when I create for myself a world where I belong to the righteous ones, or to the good ones, or the awakened, call them as you like, while the others are the unawakened ones, or I may even think that even Jesus can't hold a candle to me, 
That is, when I feel very superior, I feel above the others, while the world is still unconscious. Because I hear people saying such nonsense, it is actually me who is nurturing the unconsciousness. That's why the great, true masters have never taught the dividing New Age nonsense. They never attempt to divide North from South good from bad, because the division only reinforces the conflict in the world. The great masters have always talked about compassion, about not doing to others what you would not want them to do to you, regardless of whether others are good or bad, aware or unaware, whether they belong to your religion or follow your guru or not. Here is the key thing to understand. In fact, the servants, I like the term servant better than master, because the word master inflates the ego. So in the new consciousness, the servants are those who have stopped trying to break, to divide good from evil. And a very good example is precisely the fact that when I am internally divided and when I indulge in the fight of the vaccinated against the unvaccinated, of the pro-Putin against the pro-Zelensky, of the communists against the fascists, of the right wing versus the left wing. I even heard people dividing those who meditate, good God, from those who do not meditate, or those who chant my Buddhist mantra versus those who don't. Always the same nonsense. It is precisely us who are reinforcing the duality in the world. And therefore, we will not be able to help the world go beyond, in that beyond where God's light and true peace shine bright. This is why so many masters who have learned some techniques and teach others, unfortunately, while teaching their techniques, they reinforce this illusion in the world, because there is not enough gold and purple around them, and they don't have gold and purple in their aura, because they didn't make an inner click. They just understood some techniques and repeated them. It's okay in some cases. For example, I know math, and I can teach it. I don't need to have a bright aura. I understand math well, and I can teach you. I learned how to bake an ice cake, and I don't need to have the aura of Gautama the Buddha. I can teach you, maybe with love, it's wonderful, you see. Or I can play the violin well, I can teach you. I studied at the conservatory, and I can teach you the violin. I am not just strumming the violin for two years, I really know how to play it or the piano, I can teach you. However, in an inner dimension, I cannot teach you anything unless something inside you has made an inner click, but I can point out something to you that can facilitate that inner click. And that is why in the new emerging consciousness it is no longer relevant who your teacher is, what your religion is. Instead, the direct contact with reality beyond thought is fundamental. Only that makes you a servant, and not being very skilled in a technique. It is not because you have meditated for 50 years that you are a meditation expert. You may have sat down for 50 years and your head is still full of thoughts, but you think you're an expert. It doesn't work like with a violin and with mathematics. Maybe someone sits down and meditates, and already from the first time, they discover something that is beyond. More than you who have been searching for 50 years because you are still too much in the technique. And what happens then? While people give too much importance to diplomas, techniques and experts, life doesn't. And life is wonderful and as soon as what you emanate into the world begins to be minimally and truly bright, no matter what others say about you, life will enable you to serve. And you will feel that the most important thing in your life is to serve and not to try to appear to others as a servant. Because you will realize that others cannot see yet, since they are still in the head, but you will only listen to that inner call that says, serve, without expecting a result, serve, without others calling you master, serve, and that's all. It is not up to you to decide what and how to serve. Just follow what is asked of you. And that's why in the new consciousness, mastery is turned upside down. It's more like a child than a person who is an expert in a technique. It's suitable for the violin, it's suitable for math, it's not suitable for Enoclex. And here's one of the characteristics. 
It's our strong tendency to be on the side of the good ones, the aware ones, to hang out with the good ones like us, the aware ones like us, the ones who repeat the mantra as we do. I know all these things. Years ago I knew them so much. Then there comes a time when you say, look, enough. Those who are ready will realize it, and I'm not wrestling with anything but simply offering something different. Those who are on the same page will come spontaneously. Di vedere gli altri come inconsapevoli, poveretti, dormienti, cattivi. Seeing others as unaware, poor, sleeping or bad, reinforces the great magnet, and in doing so, in the name of peace, you spread the fight into the global consciousness. Rings a bell? In the era we have lived through, have you perhaps taken sides? Do you know how many people have heard say, as you teach meditation, why don't you take a stand against this or for that? Have you ever broken a magnet? Have you ever noticed that the more you strengthen the magnet's north pole, the more you also strengthen the south pole? And simply the magnet has more power to manipulate others and it's not crucial whether you feel or you are on the right side or the wrong one. Are you with me? I repeat it in this way. Whether I am on the side of the north or the side of the south, on the side of those who meditate, on the side of the good ones, on the side of the cool ones, on the side of the handsome ones like Jack, or whatever side, the moment I believe very much in that side, I am reinforcing the opposite side. And this big magnet manipulates people and keeps them unaware, adhering to their own thoughts, and identified with a person. I repeat, it is precisely those who think they are doing something in the world for peace who unknowingly reinforce the war. Unless there is awareness in you. And I've already told it, and I apologize if I tell it again. Pol Pot in Cambodia, Tatiana Tazani describes it very well in one of his last books. I forgot which one. Very nice, very profound. I like it very much. Tiziano Tassani was very much into the communist ideal years before, and Pol Pot wanted to bring communism to Cambodia. So Pol Pot took the teachings of the Buddha of the Khmers, turning them into Khmers Rouge, that is the red warriors of the ancient truths of Cambodia coming from Buddhism. What did the Buddha say? Go beyond intellectuality. What did Pol Pot do? He shot everyone wearing glasses. He didn't do it to hurt the people. He did it because he wanted to reinforce, according to him, the Buddha's teachings. Those with glasses have spent their lives reading. Those with glasses are intellectuals. The Buddha says, go beyond intellectualism. So those with glasses are bad. You don't believe it? Google it. Read it in a history book. Maybe there are history professors here and they will know it well. Unfortunately, Cambodia is a tiny land and we don't study its history. You can find the same things in Nazism, left-wing or right-wing, you find the same things in Mao Zedong's terrible communism, and in all dictatorships you can find the fact of giving importance to one pole. At best, Pol Pot wanted the good for his people. He was not a bad person, but brought enormous violence to the world. Nowadays we consider him a bad guy, but he was not bad. He had good intentions, and you might say, so much for that. That's just a higher volume for you to see, that I invite you to go deeper on your own. Study the story of Pol Pot. At least in the early years, he was moved by the highest ideals and wanted the rebirth of Cambodia following the ideals of the ancient conscious warriors of the past. He asked all the Cambodian intellectuals living abroad around the world to come back to help the Cambodian people to rise again, and when they arrived at the airport, he shot them. Delve into these things. They are often not said because they take on political connotations. Well, Pol Pot intended to bring back the teaching of the Buddha among the people. What did he do? He reinforced violence and fear in the world. However, his intent was good, even if he was inspired by the teachings of the ancient Khmers, who were, so to say, spiritual warriors.
He had the best intentions, but he lacked inner clicks. On a lower volume, we can do a very similar thing in this time of great fear. Just as we have the best intentions, we are convinced that our technique, our guru, our group is here to do good for the world. When you want to reinforce your vision, you're also reinforcing the opposite version. That is why every awakening goes beyond the mind and its beliefs. When you are moved by a belief, no matter how good it is, it will only bring evil into the world. And initiate sees it. Good only comes from the one who has distanced himself from the thinking and thus truly makes awareness flow into the world, an awareness that no longer divides the North Pole from the South Pole. Are you with me? Ora vedremo che oggi una frase della luce sul sentiero che leggeremo parla esattamente di questo. We will see a sentence from Light on the Path. It talks about this. Light on the Path is considered one of the earliest teachings and one of the most basic ones. However, I feel that almost no one is ready for this teaching because so many people are hypnotized by the old consciousness and by an ideal of good. Before we go any further, I will repeat it. Did the era we just lived through, so you take sides. You know, I have seen people taking sides the most, saying, only love wins, but we are the good guys, and those guys are not bad, just don't understand shit. But later on, they will understand. Do you understand? That's just an attitude that an initiate is very attentive to, and he's not against this attitude. He's just trying to make others see that it is a trap and does not bring good into the world. There are great beings who I love very much, even though some people criticize them. Adyashanti, Muji, Eckhart Tolle. Beings who bring a very high consciousness to the world, and none of them have ever pushed anyone to take sides. Have you ever wondered why? So many say because they are weak, because they don't come down in the struggle, but that is not true. So please let this run wild within you, the image of the super magnet. The moment everyone thinks that way, the magnetic tuning fork starts to influence everyone around without even the need for a bad guy to be there and influence others. We feed it with our own energy, with our own identification. Are you with me? So please, let this run wild within you calmly, and this allows us to take a step further. First, get up and go close to another person.